Did you know that the devil wants to defeat you in 2020, but God has already provided your weapon to fend him off? Let's talk about it. Yo guys, what's up? This is Jeff from That Bold Life. We make videos just like this nearly every week to make faithful followers of Jesus and equip them to change the world. If that sounds like what you're looking for, do me a favor and hit that subscribe button. Make sure to follow the channel and keep up with what we have going on here every single week. By the way, if you would like to talk about this video or the Bible or any other content, or just watch me play some video games and hang out for a little bit, also stream on Twitch on Monday, Tuesday, Friday, and Saturday. So come hang out at twitch.tv slash Dr. Heels. So last week I made a video that I called what does Satan want for you in 2020? And I wasn't happy leaving it at that because the, the essential idea is that Satan wants you to become tired, lazy, and ineffective for the kingdom of God. Satan wants to watch you fail at your resolutions. He wants to watch you sit on the couch and give up and essentially become ineffective for the kingdom of God. Because when you are sitting on a couch, you are ineffective for the kingdom of God. When you are being lazy and you are not pouring your full self into the ministry that God has provided for you, you're not fighting against Satan. And so that's what Satan essentially wants for you. If you haven't watched that video, Video, make sure to click it right over here and then come back to this one because in this one we're going to talk about what God has given you to fight off the enemy to ward off the attacks of the enemy and before we can understand what God has given us to fight him off we must first understand how Satan will attack us and we can go all the way back to the Garden of Eden to the very beginning to Satan's very first attack on mankind and this was against Adam and Eve we see him show up and, and all Adam and Eve know at this point is they know love and they know justice and they know that God God is with them and they know that God loves them and that's all they know. They don't know misery yet. They don't know suffering. They don't know death. And then Satan comes up and he begins to lie to them. And he begins to tell them over and over and over again that, yo, what God told you isn't true. You won't die. You can eat of this tree and you'll become just like God. And see, that's the way the devil comes into our lives. He comes in and he lies to us. He tells us lie after lie after lie until he convinces us that what God said about us isn't true until he convinces us that we should go our own way, that we should stop following the path of God, that maybe God's way isn't the only way, that maybe the what the culture is doing and what the community around us is doing, what our friend is doing, maybe that's okay and God is wrong. You see, the devil always comes with lies. And so how do we fend him off? In the book of Ephesians, when he writes his letter to the church in Ephesus, he tells them that you need to put on the full armor of God. Let's read it here in Ephesians 6, verse 10. Ephesians 6, 10 through 18 says, Finally, be strong in the Lord in his mighty power. Put on the full armor of God so that you can take your stand against the devil's schemes. Again, what is his scheme? It is to lie. It is to convince you that what God has said is not true. He says, put on the full armor of God. And then he says, for our struggle is not against flesh and blood, but against the rulers, against the authorities, against the powers of this dark world and against the spiritual forces of evil in the heavenly realms. Therefore, put on the full armor of God so that when the day of evil comes, you may be able to stand your ground. And after you have done everything to stand, stand firm then with the belt. Oh, I love that though. When you have done everything to stand, when you've done everything of your own accord to stand, he then says, stand firm then and put on the belt of truth buckled around your waist with the breastplate of righteousness in place and with your feet fitted with the readiness that comes from the gospel of peace. In addition to all this, take up the shield of faith with which you can extinguish all the flaming arrows of the evil one and then take up the helmet of salvation and the sword of the spirit, which is the word of God. In verse 18, he says, and pray in the spirit on all occasions with all kinds of prayers and requests. With this in mind, be alert and always keep on praying for all the Lord's people. Now, one thing I want to focus on is one of the first thing, the very first thing that Paul says, we would think, what do you think we would, he would start with? Well, clearly he would talk with our sword. We'd start with our sword or maybe, maybe he would start with our, 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 our breastplate because that is, that is our, our biggest tool of armor. Or maybe he would start with our sandals since that's going to carry us into battle. But instead, he starts with the belt of truth. Why? You see, I think it's because 
Paul knew that the Ephesians, they'd been used to seeing Roman soldiers. They had been used to seeing the uniform they would wear and, and they would have known that the belt, although it may seem insignificant, was an essential part of the Roman soldier's outfit. You see, because the belt actually held their breastplate, the largest portion of their armor to their, their lower armor, and it actually held it all together. And because of that belt, their armor stayed on and it stayed tight and it protected their entire torso. You see, and he equates that. He could have put it as anything, but he said that belt is truth. And I think it's because he knew how the devil was going to attack the church of Ephesus. He knew that the devil was going to come with lies and he's going to try to convince them that wrong is right and right is wrong. And that if you, you claim to be right and you claim to follow God, and if you, you claim to follow God, you're going to be hated and people aren't going to like that about you. And that's actually the wrong thing to do. That makes you a hater. It makes you a uh, judgmental and he's going to come at you and he's going to try to lie to you over and over again. And that's why Paul says the very first thing you need to put on is the belt of truth. You need to know truth and you need to know more than anything. You need to know God's truth. That once you know God's truth, you will not be swayed by the lies of the enemy. You will not be swayed by the lies and the temptation of the devil because you already know the truth of God because God has already poured the truth into your heart. The thing is we have to seek him and understand him. We in the 2020, in this culture, we have to know the truth of God because the enemy is whispering into our ears every single day and he's lying and he says, you can't follow that. You can't believe that way. You can't follow God. It makes you a hater. It'll make you judgmental. It'll make the people around you not like you. And he's sitting there whispering these things and we, we begin to be swayed by the whispers of the enemy. And Paul says, you must put on the belt of truth. Truth is the thing that holds it all together. You've got to put on your belt. It's what holds on the breastplate of righteousness. It's what holds on your lower armor. It's what holds everything together is the truth of God. And the other thing that Paul says, and, and it kind of jumped out to me this time is everything he listed here was defensive, except one thing, the sword. He says our only tool to fight back against the enemy is the word of God, that he has equipped us with the word of God, that he has equipped us with the very breath of God, that we have been given a sword of the spirit that will slice through all evil realms, that will cut through all the lies of the enemy, that will cut away all the nastiness around us, that if we would go to his word and we would open it up day after day after day, it would take place inside of our heart and that God would use it to pour into us and it would become the weapon we use to fend off the enemy. If you want to know how to stop the enemy's attacks in 20 20. It's very simple. You open the scripture every single day and allow God to fill you with his power. Allow God to fill you with the Holy Spirit that will become your weapon because you're wielding the sword of the spirit. So if you would like to fend off the devil in 2020, if you would like to put his lies away, if you would like to remove his evil from your life, do me a favor, wield your weapon. Put on your belt of truth, carry your breastplate of righteousness and wield the weapon that God has given you. Make this the year that you fend off the devil. You tell him, no way, not I, not me, Satan. This is not the year. You will not reach him. You will not get to me. I will not listen to your lies because the only person speaking to me is God himself. And I am going to him through his word. Make this the year. All right, guys, if you enjoyed this video, be sure to subscribe to the channel. If you want to hang out, ask me any questions, be sure to follow me down on Twitch. Link will be down in the description. Thank you all for hanging out. Keep living that bold life. Peace. Can you please stop moving. For real? That wasn't as I was supposed to go. How much chicken health do you have? Are you kidding me?